Hey, hello again. Well, I'm out hiking along one of my favorite trails, the Green Water Lakes Trail. It's kind of close to home, but it's up in the mountains enough that I get away from the city noise and get to see a little bit of nature. I'm out doing some winter hiking. I love hiking in the winter. The trails are usually pretty empty. There are very few bugs. It's not very hot. And the scenery is usually just so different. I'm seeing a little bit of snow falling, but there's not a lot on the trail. There's a little bit of ice here and there. It's early February, so the days are short. I'm gonna hike a little bit, get a little exercise, breathe in this beautiful clean air, and try to find a place to set up and paint. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Alright, well here's the scene I want to paint. I want to try to make something of this. I like the logs laying across the river with the snow on them. I think that's a uh, some interesting shapes there, especially with the moss growing on the branches coming out of the logs. I also like this little scene here. Very pretty with the snow falling in front of it. I don't know if I'll try to capture that or not. That would be difficult, I think, but I'll think about it. I do like that little scene there, that little calm pool behind the log. I like that there's some reds and yellows in the water, in that calm water. And there's a little action in the river in front of the scene. I might be able to come up with a way to lead the eye into it with some rocks and some rapids. I also like the trees that are growing up on the bank there. We've got a variety of trees, some with some white bark. A little bit of snow, a little, little bit of moss, some depth behind it. So, I think I'll have a cup of coffee and try to come up with a plan here. I've got a little bit of a flat space to stand here under this tree, so kind of sheltered from the, the elements, although the tree is going to drip on me once in a while, but that's okay. Okay, I had a cup of coffee and I had a look around and thought about what would make an interesting composition. I'm gonna be a bit daring here. I'm going to borrow this pool. I like the way that pool is nice and flat before it hits the rapids. I'm gonna paint it kind of in this area in front of that pool. So there'll be a kind of a, a building, a little bit of a pattern there. Then I'm gonna paint this clump of trees with this little snow covered log leading into the scene. I want to keep the composition kind of tight just right in that area. But instead of painting that spindly little tree there, I'm actually going to borrow this tree, which is just so much more interesting. And I may actually 
borrow both this tree and that tree. I like how this one is closer and dark. It's kind of light at the base and then darker toward the top. And I like how the one right behind it is a little paler. It's going back into the distance. So that's the idea. I'll try to sketch it out. I'm gonna go with an 11 by 14 inch panel so that I have a little more room to play. I'm gonna just go kind of quick and, and see what happens. It may or may not work here out in the field, but if not, I'll at least capture some colors and get a feel for the day. Enjoy this beautiful snow falling and uh, then take it back to the studio and finish it up there. If you do come out this way, watch out for these little guys. They will spike you and, and leave a, a splinter that is really hard to get out. And they're all over through this kind of low-lying marshy area. I'm going to get set up while you enjoy watching the snowfall. I'll start with a charcoal sketch. I'm just going to sketch in the big composition those elements that I talked about. Put it on the panel, try to line up with the one-third lines that I've pre-drawn on my panel. I want the big trees and I want the important pools kind of hitting those one-third lines, especially where those one-third lines intersect. Then once I have that down, I'll erase the one-third lines and kind of wipe away most of the charcoal. You can see as I'm doing the charcoal sketch and as I'm doing the painting, I'm gonna have some drops of water from the tree above falling on me and on the panel. No big deal, I've got my hood up and a little bit of water in with the oil paint doesn't hurt anything. I've been reading a book about John Singer Sargent, a really good book by a, a person that came a little bit after Sargent who knew his work and knew him. Um, and that was Sargent's approach, was to sketch in charcoal just really roughly and do a tonal wash with turpentine and then go from there into the mid-tones. So that's, that's kind of cool. That's kind of the process I've been using for the last year or so. Um, except I go from the turpentine wash into painting the darks. So a slight difference there. I have a little bit of a charcoal sketch in now. I've got the river coming down through here. That little pool, just the edge of it there. And then the deeper pool here that foreground big tree, background smaller tree, and then one more tree kind of off center. So I've got these two trees on the one third lines. I've got this nice deep pool very close to this intersection of one third lines. I've got kind of a pattern of rocks that are leading back to the pool here. I've got a kind of pattern of snow on the ground back here. I think I'll borrow the background from uh, I'll borrow the background from this view. I like the kind of light warm gray wall of trees back there and even a hint of blue sky in the far distance. Titanium white, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, Ultramarine blue, sap green, burnt umber, burnt sienna, lizard and crimson, cat red. Cat yellow, cat yellow lemon, yellow ochre. This is my standard colors for outdoor painting. A bit of liquid. A little more 
titanium white. This is actually radiant white, which is a mix of titanium white and safflower oil. So it's just a little less yellow than normal titanium white. I'll start with a big bristle brush and just set the tone, the colors for the scene with the turpentine wash. In the scene today, kind of the color behind the color, the background glowing color, there's a cobalt blue to the sky that I like. So I think I'll go in with that first to just barely stain the sky a little bit blue, maybe with a hint of alizarin crimson. And then the background, I'm going to stain that with just a little bit of burnt sienna. And then as I move forward into that pool of water, I'll use some cadmium yellow to get that nice orange undertone. And I think that'll about do it. I think those colors will, will set the tone for the painting. There's the basic turpentine stain in now. I've tried to keep the shape of the trees, I've tried to highlight where the deep pool is with the red and orange intense colors, and I've tried to, sh to show the flowing of the river with some alizarin crimson and that background sky with just a little bit of cobalt blue. I'll let that set up a little bit. I'll blend it with this same bristle brush just to take out some of the sharp edges. I may splatter a little bit of turpentine on that rocky, mossy slope to get some random shapes in there. As this sets up, I'll also take a brush with a little bit of turpentine and wipe away the lightest lights, like the bark of the tree down low, the bark on that far distant small tree, the snow on that foreground log, maybe a, a few of the rapids. There's roughly the value pattern now that the wash is in and I've wiped away the lightest lights and added a little bit of dark. I'm really careful here in the woods when I splatter, when I do these washes, and just in general I'm really careful not to drip any turpentine or paint onto the forest floor. I make sure I pack away all my trash, I don't drop any paper towels or leave any kind of mess. I want to leave the scene just as pretty as I found it. So these drips that are falling, these drips of paint and drips of turpentine, I'm careful that they fall onto my palette and not onto the forest floor. Something interesting is happening over here behind the big trees. That far background slope is getting some light, so there's some yellow on the distant hill. I don't know if that's coming out or not, but I may hint at that as well. Just throw a little band of light yellow in on those far hills. When I squint at the scene, it's still there, so that would be kind of interesting if I could capture it. Alright, I'm going to let that turpentine wash set up just a little bit more. I'm going to have a cup of coffee, warm my hands up a bit, and then I'll mix up some of the colors that I see in the scene. I just want to capture the main interesting tones of color. For instance, in this scene, I really want to capture that warm gray in the tree trunk here, next to the kind of warm brownish orange with hints of green of the moss climbing along the tree. There's also some really vibrant yellows I think that's lichen growing on the bark. I just want to capture those patterns a little bit. Some of the darker browns higher up on the tree and also that wall of warm gray in the background. And then also the tones, the greens and browns and oranges in that deep pool. 
All right, I'm mixing up a little bit of blue and a little bit of a light lavender for the sky, for the blue of the sky and the lavender clouds, and then a little bit of almost pure white with just a touch of yellow for some of the clouds as they come close to the horizon. These colors are very high in value, almost white. I'm judging it by holding my knife up against the color I'm trying to match. That's probably, you probably can't see the paint on my knife at all in the video since it's so strongly backlit. But that sky, even this blue compared to the tree, is very light, very high value. So I'm going with almost white. When I squint down at this scene, this blue and this the blue of the sky and the white of the clouds, they almost become just one white. So I don't want to exaggerate that blue like the camera is doing. As I come forward, I'll switch to darker. I'll go with darker, more transparent values like burnt umbers and alizarin crimson here, especially in this shadow. I'll try to keep it transparent. And then as I march forward into this pool, I'll bring in some yellows and some oranges, but all very muted, all very grayed down. At the very end, I may throw in some splashes of high chroma, pure color, maybe a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow for the moss, a little bit of yellow for the lichen on the tree trunks, but very sparingly because I'm not seeing a lot of high chroma color in this scene. I've mentioned before I used this on Plain Air Pro palette and easel setup. It works nice. I've had it for a couple years now and it's holding up pretty well. The tripod it comes with this Slick 8000 breaks pretty often. It's a cheap tripod so I've had to replace it a couple times. Um, I do want to get a nicer carbon fiber tripod, but they are expensive. I'm sure it would last longer though. This Unplane Air Pro easel is a good starter, but I've noticed because it has a plastic palette, it's a kind of durable, some kind of acrylic, I think. Um, I like to use the palette knife a lot, and I like to mix my pre-mix my paint. Maybe if I didn't use my palette knife so much, it wouldn't be a problem, but the way I use my palette knife, it's as it's getting a little older and it's getting a little rougher, um, my palette knife is catching. And sometimes it turns and it twists the palette knife and it's just annoying. It just kind of distracts me from what I'm trying to do and slows me down. So after a little research, I'm gonna try a Day Tripper by Joshua Bean. Um, I gave my wife a couple hints and she's going to get me one for Valentine's Day which was a very sweet thing to do. So in my upcoming videos I hope to give that a try and I'll let you know how it goes. I'm mixing up some colors now for the background, the far background just below the sky. Taking care to keep the values very light. I know that still looks really light on the video but I've kept the colors I used for the sky here and Hopefully you can see that the colors I've mixed for the background here, hill are actually a step or two darker than the colors I mixed for the sky. So it should stand out as a difference, um, give me some delineation between the sky and the background hill. I've got kind of a greenish gray for the closer background trees, a yellow gray for that band of yellow that I mentioned before, and then kind of a background lightest blue-gray for the shadows um, in that yellow area. So I'll lay that in quickly with a bristle brush and then I'll continue to move forward. As I move forward, my values will get darker, my colors will get a little bit richer. As I've mentioned before, I really don't mind. I have no problem with 
getting a start on a painting outside and then finishing it in the studio. I don't feel constrained at all to try to do it all here outdoors, especially when it's cold out or if there's bugs or if there's wind or if the light has changed too much. Now, if I was in a competition where that was the requirement, where I had to do the whole thing outdoors on location, I would certainly try. Um, and I think early on when you're plein air painting, it's important to try to stay true to the scene. Try to really capture the feeling of the place, the colors, the lighting pattern. Really get a feel for it, capture it. You don't just take some snapshots and go back and paint from your snapshots in the studio. I think that's kind of missing an opportunity. You certainly can, and you can do whatever you want when you're painting, it's your painting. But what I have found helpful is to try to capture the true color of the scene. Your eyes just see so much more than the camera. Got some colors mixed up now. The darkest dark here is kind of a reddish black, bluish black, a little bit lighter reddish gray. I've got the colors for the bark of the tree here. That lavender gray, a little darker lavender, kind of a very light pale bluish yellow. And then some colors for the moss here and some colors for the pool of water. I've got my color that I mixed up earlier for that background hill. You, you can see there the difference in the value. This is very much lighter than these darks and even more so than the darkest darks here. So that should give that feeling of depth. Marching forward, things become higher contrast and higher chroma.
are freezing um, I do have my hand warmers in my little chemical hand warmers but they're not uh, keeping my fingertips thawed so time to wrap it up I'm losing the light as well but really beautiful day really nice to be out here um, it was really cool to see the <laughs> no pun intended really cool to see the snow falling in the woods just really pretty let me show you what I have here's where it ended up I went really fast there at the end. I was just trying to capture the colors I'm seeing in the scene and it got pretty hard to judge color and value because it is so dark here in the woods. Um, the camera's doing a good job, I think, lightening the, the scene up, but on my panel, it, there's not a whole lot of light hitting it, so it gets difficult. But I got a composition down. There's some things I like about it. I like this pool here. I like this log leading into it and kind of the pattern of the rapids here. There's something about these two trees being so close to the same shape and the same angle that I don't like. So I'm gonna play with that in the studio and see if I can't improve on it. Well, I'll clean it up a little bit, put it out on my website. As always, thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos, please share with your friends, like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the trail.